Is that balancing? This is like on a very unsteady like tripod situation right now, but I'm just gonna like move with the camera. Uh. Uh, uh. Okay, anyway, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. My name's Anita. I am just like, this is a very awkward video. I don't know why I'm finding it very uncomfortable and very awkward to film. I don't want it as like a sit down video. I do want it as more of a vlog, but I'm just starting off here. I want to talk about chronic fatigue syndrome and glandular fever. Now, I feel, I don't, like, I can't. I can't even get my words out because I don't feel like I'm lying and I don't feel like I'm not telling the truth or anything. And I, I don't have to like tell everyone every part of my life i know there's like no contract i signed when i like started youtube or anything like that but i just feel like it's kind of this issue has been sort of swept under the rug in a way in the sense that i'm not shy about it but i'm very shy about it and i kind of just like randomly in a vlog i'll be like oh, i'm so tired and i just say that all the time and i just assume that the whole world knows that i have chronic fatigue syndrome and like it just everyone just goes on with their day but then someone messaged me the other day and was like dude you should get some more sleep and I was like that's not the problem and they meant it in a really nice way they were like concerned for my health but I was like and I was like oh okay so if you're an OG subscriber this is I'm talking way back I would have made this video in January 2017 I would have said I got mono there I just said it out there and I, I and I was so open about it I was like the whole year I was so open about it but now I'm just like I'm not shy but I'm just like not open anymore I don't know am I in denial I don't know is this denial I don't know I'm gonna like put it up here because there I honestly I swear there was the, the whole I'm pretty sure the video was actually called I got mono let me just you know my channel so we're just doing a little for it's the doctors Guys, I have glandular fever. Yes, whatever. People just say, oh my god, you've got the kissing disease. The high school kissing disease. Yes, I do. Apparently, I have the high school kissing disease. So, join me on my journey of sickness. Now I'm going home because I have kissing disease. What a journey it's been. So, let's just start from the top because I feel like I'm just like... If I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this right because I'm feeling, I've been pretty, again, I'm not in denial, but I think I have been in denial about it because it's just not going away and it's just been a bit of a drama lately. But you know what? I'm just gonna make a video series about it and I'm gonna dedicate like some videos to getting better because I like to document my life. So I might as well just document this part too. So it just got I like had closed my door because it was so noisy. Can you hear that? Oh, there's the noise. Anyway, let's start from the top. December 2016, I got back from America and I was so tired. Okay, like let's just have a clicker every time I say the word tired because I'm always tired. And I got back and everyone was like, you got jet lag and I was like, no, I don't. And I knew I had something different, so I went to the doctor, and by the time all the test results came back and everything, it was early January, and um, made the announcement. I was like, I got mono, I got the kissing disease. And I did have the kissing disease, and um, unfortunately, I really had the kissing disease, and the kissing disease lasted. I've got to stop calling it the kissing disease. I think it is, its technical name is the Epstein-Barr virus. So if you have it, I totally get you. It sucks. But if it was going to happen in my life, it was the perfect time. I had just finished uni. I was, I actually had one more subject. So I was kind of doing one subject in summer school while I had this. And I, so I barely went to uni and they were really understanding about it. I was still working part-time at Pumpkin Patch. Woo, what a time. And they knew about it. So they were really sweet to me too. Do you know what time it is? When were you meant to start work? <laughs> so I really didn't have much to do other than like waste my summer in bed, which I did because I was tired. I was tired. Anyway, so I was really tired. I was tired. And I spent the whole summer in bed, more or less. I barely left my house, barely left my bed, to be honest. I, I couldn't even make it downstairs to go eat food. Like, I had lost my appetite completely. I was. I, like it sounds horrible and I know it's so unhealthy, but like, you know, some days I'd go down and I'd have like, I just cut a piece of cheese and I 
eat that for the day it was it was horrible lost a lot of weight because that's what happens anyway so then the, the the time went on i started to feel better around march april um march i went to hawaii i had my cousin's wedding and as soon as i got back pretty much i got my wisdom teeth removed and my mom was pushing me this whole time you need to get a job you need to like you need to get on with your life and i was in denial at this point because it wasn't the glandular i was in denial for i was in denial because i didn't want to get a job i didn't want to be an adult i didn't want to apply for jobs i just wanted to just sleep because I was tired. Not that I'm blaming my mom, she did great. So I kept making excuses. My next excuse was I'm gonna get my wisdom teeth out and I had to get them out and I had to get pushed back because I had glandular that they wouldn't do the surgery earlier. I got the teeth out and I was very fortunate and touch wood, lucky wood. I never actually applied for my job at Daily Mail. I was approached. So that was very nice. And I still like interviewed and stuff like that, but I didn't actually have to go through the applying process of that. So it was a very smooth transition. But anyway, I was on the men, so it was all good. I started going to work. I do night shifts, I do day shifts. And you know, it was getting a bit much for my body to be from doing nothing all day to doing like going to work and I'd never had a like a full on full time job in my life as well at the same time and the hours and the you know everything was just like woo so my body was like what are you doing to me and I was like I don't know what's happening right now and I was just so tired and I was just emotional and it was it was in the middle of the whole green card situation as well so like I was like it was just a, not a great time like internally my body was just very stressed out and i'm not a stressed person why well, i never used to be i am now and but like everything was just like oh my god this is too much just at my wits end i started going to a naturopath and i went to dr hayden keys and miranda lincoln blow he's very very good and very beautiful and very nice and the first thing he made me do was this saliva test. I told him all my symptoms and I just like, I was just an emotional mess. And I was just like this and this and then this happened and then this and then like my body was like going crazy and changing as well because like all the weight that I'd lost, like I was putting it back like on, which was great. But it was just so fluctuating as well. It was just like all off the... Of it was just a mind fuck, really. And it was like, calm down. And he made me first do this adrenal gland saliva test. So that what it is, is you get a few tubes and throughout the day, you are just like, <laughs> it sounds so gross, but like you're literally spitting in this tube and they're collecting like your spit, more or less, throughout the day. And then you ship it away and it can, and the scientists come back with the results. And they've pretty much just tracked how your adrenal glands are going throughout the day. And it's pretty much how your body can deal with stress and like your body can deal with like shit that's happening. And obviously my results were not good because like I, my body could not deal with that stuff. Like he put me on these like vitamin C's, this the most disgusting tonic you've ever seen, but you know, you gotta do things for health. I mean, I stopped taking it because it was so sickening. It tasted like a Jager bomb, but like you got, like you didn't even get drunk. You didn't get happy. You just wanted to throw up. It was disgusting. I will never have a Jager bomb again in my life. Like that is just like, I'm done. I'm done for life. Put me on all of that. And I was like, you know, I was seeing him regularly. He stopped my exercise. So like I didn't do any exercise. I was just going for walks and he told me to meditate and yoga and I'm like not good at it. I tried, but I wasn't good. I was doing the walks, you know, like every now and then. And my body started to just like zen out for a bit and it was doing really well. And then I came back to America and I, like, I was all good. I had like had a nice like time and napping while I was here at that time. So this is December 2017 now. So this is a year after I contracted this disgusting kissing disease. Like I will never kiss a boy ever again after this because it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. Whatever. Um, <laughs> I was like here. All my beautiful friends just let me sleep all the time. And of course, but at the same time, like it was the time of like uh, the green card. Am I going to get a green card? Am I going to move? Like, you know, so I was a bit like, you know, stressed out and anxious about it because I didn't know what my life was going to be as well. It's not, it wasn't so much, will I win the lottery or something? It was like literally in like two months time. Am I living in Australia or am I living in America? Because you have to move if you get it. So I'm just like, what? Like, am I supposed to be looking for places? Am I, like, obviously I was saving my money regardless. So I was like ready to go. I'd been saving my money for like two years because I was like so ready. But I was like, what am I gonna, like, where? So I was like, again, a bit like, Ooh, but I was like trying to be really sad. 
then i got it it was a great time i wasn't stressed at all about the move or anything i was still living at home i still sorry i gotta crack my back it's really sore oh did you hear that well i feel like i'm at the chiropractor but yeah so i got i got this green card right and i was like oh i'm moving like it was all good i wasn't stressed about it, about the move i was eating really healthy at home you know i had been told to cut out gluten and dairy when i was seeing my naturopath at home and that's because those are the foods that are harder to break down in your body i was really good at it at the beginning and that's probably why i started to get healthier but then i just fell off the bandwagon when i moved like not move when i traveled here so between like january 2018 so this year to when i moved i was kind of on i was i was pretty good but like not the best i was like i was like treat yourself you know and then i moved and i mean i didn't it wasn't a stressful move it honestly was not a stressful move but my body thought it was and um so yeah, so I've been living here for six months now and apparently my body has not liked it. I mean, my body is fine. It's not dying. And like, can I just like touch wood and just like say, pref like preface that I know I don't have it as bad as some people. And I, well, that's why I think I don't like to talk about it because I don't feel like it's a worthy, I don't feel worthy of like feeling ill when there are so many people out there when like mine is literally I'm tired. Like, and I know it's more than just that, but that's. I feel guilty about saying I'm tired because everyone gets tired and I know it's a different tired. Can I just say it's a different tired? So don't, it's like really different and it's really hard, but like, I just feel guilty about it. But what I need to say is where we are now. We're on the, we got to fix it. So pretty much a few weeks ago, I was like moody and I'm sure you can tell from my videos, I was like having like, I was just like not in the best mood and it was because I was so tired and I was just so like emotionally drained and physically drained and just drained, drained, drained and I'm just, it, it was just so gross and I was just so negative and I just didn't, I was like what is going on, like why are I, what, like literally, like I know I'm tired but I was more tired than usual and I was just like very, very vulnerably like you could like touch me and I'd probably cry. Like I was just like an emotional mess. And like sometimes those happen, but you know, I was like, what? Like this is just, this is just too much. And I was like, I need to fix this. And I know it's like incurable, like this disease, this is the thing about chronic fatigue syndrome. You can, you can have it for life or your body can, you know, finish it off in six months or two years and like whatever, you just don't know. And it's not like you can get like antibiotics and like kill it because you can't, there's nothing you can do except like treat your body like the temple that it is. Just, I was like, you know, at my wit's end, I was like, you know what? I can't do this on my own anymore. I have to go see another naturopath. So I went to another naturopath this week. She's very lovely. I've only had one session with her. We have another spit test, which I've been doing today. Woo, I just dropped it. And I just wanted to talk, I just, you know what? I just wanted this, I just wanted to talk about it because I don't feel like I'm lying and I don't feel like I'm hiding the truth, but I just don't feel like, I feel like I just need to preface like my life a little bit because why I'm tired. And when I say I'm tired, I, you know, honestly, I probably slept 12 hours last night and I probably had a nap in the day too and I'm probably still tired. So that's the reality of it. Like right now I'm doing a video and I look like, well, I don't know if I look awake or what, but I'm not too tired because I just woke up from a nap. So it's my day off. And another thing someone said, this is what like really was like, I really should make a video because someone was like, oh my God, you have such an exciting life. You're always out and about. I watch your vlogs. And I was like, okay, so th that literally i'm never out i'm honestly always in bed and i like it affects your social life it affects your work life like sometimes i have to call in sick because i literally physically can't get out of bed because like it actually it's more than just like oh i'm like so tired today it physically also hurts so like your muscles always ache and your joints are achy and like everything it's just heavy like it's so bad that some like one the, the other day i haven't washed my plates and i like i'm i'm pretty ocd about that like i like to be nice and neat and clean and like clean floors and just like white and clean i just like that and i wash my dishes because i was too tired to even wash my dishes the other day i was washing my plate and it was so heavy i dropped it and broke it like that's like sometimes you just feel that weak today i'm not feeling that weak but like you know some days are like better than others i just feel like i have to kind of be honest about it and be open and say like you know when i'm vlogging 
and like you might see like a 15 minute video and that like you know 20 minutes let's even say like that you off the footage is probably the 20 minutes I've been out and about in two weeks like that's pretty much my whole life is in that video other than that I'm in bed like actually I don't have like it's not a fun life it's a very okay bring yourself to go to work you've got to go to work just get out of bed go to work come home go to sleep and then it's like shit you actually don't have toilet paper you need to run an errand get up and do it and I'm probably vlogging that you know or my plant is just really dead and like I feel guilty and you know I'm probably thinking it's giving me bad oxygen because it's kind of really dead and I'm here I'm having trying to have these thriving plants to have like the best oxygen and the best homely feeling that I can get in my home because I'm here all the time sleeping so I might as well have fresh oxygen by the way Maria is thriving where we are now I know this has been a very jumbled video but I feel like I'm verbal diarrhea now once I I start I just can't stop and it's good because I didn't know how to talk I've not known how to talk about this for so long and it, like I just haven't really I didn't want to acknowledge it per, per se you know what I mean like it's not I just again I just kind of feel guilty that I feel tired oh I hate that word it has to be it has to be a better way but that's how I feel let's talk about this little spit test properly because like you know you might as well learn if you've got chronic fatigue like I'd love to hear what you're on look I've done two spits today it sounds so weird I don't want to say it like I've spat twice today I'm not a spitty person okay so this is again it's testing your hormones and it's testing your adrenal fatigue and it's really good because I can now compare my results from last year when I got it nearly a year ago to now okay so this one I didn't have this one in my old one maybe my doctor did it for me but you actually have to fill in like all it's like a questionnaire I feel like I'm doing the like the nap plan at school when you had to put like zero to two like you know a b c d circle 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 I'm gonna have to spend all afternoon doing this it's like you know it's a long one but you know there's stuff like are you doing Depressed? Are you tearful? Are you anxious? Are you nervous? Are, do you have morning fatigue, afternoon fatigue, irritable? Are you stressed? Like, it's not strange to me that they put that stuff in there. When I first got it, it was strange when the naturopath asked me stuff like that. Are you depressed? Are you sad? And I was like, am I? I don't know. I was so confused because I've never had like like touch wood. I've been lucky. I've never had a mental illness in my life. And but. And I don't talk about it, but this really brings you down. It really, really, really does because, I mean, you're in bed all day. It's like, it's really hard because you're just, you can't go out. It's like, that's the reality of it. You just physically, I don't want to cry. <laughs> I don't know why I'm crying, but like, you can't physically, you can't physically go out and you can't have like, you can't have a social life you can't really you don't have and it's not even that oh i can't go out with my friends it's not about that it's like simple it's as simple as i used to be really fit i used to be really active i used to i love running errands like things like that i'm just an out person like get in your car and off you go sort of thing my mom's like that my grandma's like that that's how i've been brought up my brother's not like that but that's just him my grandma like sh she's I love my grandma, like obviously duh, and she's like that person that she will be out every single day and I can tell you right now where she'll be, like Monday, Tuesday she'll be at the gym, she'll also go to the bank and to the shops and do her groceries, Wednesday is like a nice relaxing day, she might cook a little bit, you know, Thursday is her day out, she'll be out and about in some shopping centre around Sydney, go find her if you can, Friday is her ladies lunch, she has to get together with her little friends and go there, Saturday she cleans the house and Sunday she rest again because it's god's day and god likes to rest as well on a sunday and my mom she's always out you never know where my mom is like i'll just like call her and she'll be like she could be like i'm in mexico and that's how i've been brought up and that's how i like to be so it's like very it's a very hard thing knowing and feeling that you can't everything that you used to do you can't do anymore and i used to work out or like every day like without a, without fail for like an hour pretty much at least and now i'm like you have i have to it's taken me over a year and i'm still not there to like tell yourself it's okay if you went for a 10 minute walk today you did really well and that's sad like that's just ridiculous to say it like that but like like I am even just at this point trying to get out of the house just every second day to go for that 10 minute walk like good job claps for you you did really well today you even went to you even bought groceries today that's 
massive and that's like it's re that's the reality of it that is the massive part but it's not that massive in like how you i'm sure everyone feels like that like how it used to be versus how it is now doing groceries like that's my favorite thing in the world and that's like like now i like try have to put it off because i'm like i'm just too tired like i just did my laundry guys today like that's massive it's been four weeks i was pushing it in that what's it called the washing machine like it was beyond overfilled it should not have been so much in there but i was like <laughs> four weeks i'm not doing it again just four weeks of worth of laundry it just needs to be pushed off i have no underwear left like push it in there that's the reality and it's not pretty i know i'm going on massive tangents here but you know so then it just talks about all this stuff you just tick it tick it tick it you just do this you have four of these i've already done two and you just put them back in the freezer so i'm just keeping them nice and cleanliness cleanly clean and that's it moving forward so i go to see dr whimsy anderson i'll link her below i Again, I've only been once, but love her so far, but you know, I'm on now, I, they're not all here, I had to order a lot online, but like 10 different medications now for it. I will show you an inset when they arrive, and a very brand new diet, which is interesting, and it's called the Cappadocia. Bal oh, balancing excess Cappadocia with diet. Oh, I thought the Cappadocia was the diet. They said the qualities of Kappa include heavy, cool, sweet, and moist. Eat foods with the opposite qualities to ban balance excess cap. So, pretty much, I need to be eating very warm foods because that's already been broken down and it's very more easy to digest. Again, no gluten, no dairy, that's out as well. We're like back on there. And then there's just like really strict things as in, I don't eat meat anyway, so that you have to cut out meat. So for that one, you can have a little bit of chicken if you want and fish, but no red meat, so it's fine by me. So the taste of kappa and i'm not by the way i'm no doctor so this is how i'm this is what i'm being to prescribe to so please see your gp or your naturopath or whatever and they can give you their recommendations for you but this is what was for given for me um the best tastes for me are pungent bitter and astringent and i have to avoid sweet sour and salty pretty much no fruits which is fine i haven't craved fruits lately um Nuts and seeds are out except of sunflowers and pumpkins. Um, legumes are only pretty much red lentils. Soybeans and split peas and mung beans. So pretty much just a very plant-based diet. There's a possibility. I didn't really even know this could be a thing. But there's a possibility I could have contracted glandular again. Which is why I am even more tired again. Which glandular mono but epstein Barr virus what are they? i feel like they're all the same name so just like you know do your thing the was it i think it was in my video the other day i woke up with like a broken rib it's not broken but i'm just like a mess and you would have seen when anita was here and i like woke up that one morning we went hiking and i was like my rib is so sore and it was so sore and the next day i woke up it was even worse and i was like and it was so painful but i was like i don't think i broke a rib like i was like i can feel all my bones and i probably should have gotten it checked out but i was like i'll just wait one more day and i emailed my doctor and she's like you know if it doesn't fix in a few days you know come in but i was like okay but it started to feel better off like the next day and it kept getting a little bit better on and off so apparently i ruptured my spleen and so this happens when you construct gl the glandular virus what can happen is it enlarges the spleen which can cause it to rupture now obviously this is not the biggest rupture there is otherwise i would have had to have like surgery and fix it so we're just like taking it slow and taking it easy and just making sure that like that just stays in place and it doesn't rupture anymore because like i don't just not in the mood to deal with something like that but i do want it to be a series because i do want to be more open about it and i want to i feel like when i talk about things i um it's good for me and it's good for everyone and it's good to share and there's no knowledge online that i could really find or there's no one i could really like turn to when i was sick with this stuff i couldn't really see anything that helped me except for medical articles that said i had cancer i was gonna die so I want to like you know share the journey i'm no again i'm no doctor so please consult your own doctor i just am just saying and just detailing what is happening to me and my body and yeah like i love how like I, I follow a lot of youtubers that have like little series like you know pcos series you know they're like gradually getting better or you know this is what i'm doing this is what i'm eating so i'm just gonna make it like a little playlist and i'm gonna like you know chuck in there this is how i'm eating this is what i'm doing and it's gonna be my little like 
chronic fatigue, glandular, mono, spleen series. And that, can you hear that? It's like annoying. Can you not? Oh, he stopped. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit subscribe and like in whatever order. I am tired, so I'm going to go have a nap now and take my laundry out of the 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 um the dryer. My four weeks worth of laundry. And yeah, I'm gonna make it a series and I already feel better like just being open about it. So like, you know, I hope this can help someone. Let me know if you've suffered or you have any tips or tricks because I'm, bye. <laughs>